Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Russ with rwgresearch.com. So today I'm testing limit switches for Z-Probe applications. Now, if you haven't watched uh, Tom's videos on all the limit switches, all of the probes, well not many limit switches, just a few, but the probes for Z-Probing, proximity, capacitive, all kinds of stuff. He went through all the myths and different things and a while back, uh, well, by the way, if you haven't seen that video, you definitely need to go watch it. I'll link it in the description. You can even watch it before this one. But um, a long time ago, I found a, um, actually Jeff, I think, found the Z-Probe using hall sensors. And I thought, cool. So I re-engineered that a little bit to work with the stuff that I had and also so that I could use a different hall sensor. So, it's a so what I got to thinking is, after watching Tom's video, and realizing, man, those limit switches are actually pretty accurate, way more accurate than I would have thought. I decided to get as many of the limit switches, the small ones that I have laying around, and test each one of them. Now, Tom tested a micro switch, which is a pretty big one, and they are sub-micro and even smaller switches. So I'm going to go ahead and test all of the types of small micro switches. So what I decided to do is to build a program and a end effector probe that I could attach these different Z, uh, or different limit switches to. And so what we're going to do now is I have two scenarios. I have one where the probe sensor probes 25 times continuously in one spot and gives me the deviation and the mean values of that probing. And then the other one is what's happening now, which I'll show you a better visual here. But the, the whole entire thing is moving. 100 millimeters in a square pattern and then going back to the point where it was probing. And the reason I did it like this is because I wanted a real world scenario. So in Tom's video, he just had a jig with an Arduino that probed like this. But in real world scenarios, the machine is going to be moving around. So if there's any loose things that are going to happen within the switch mechanism that you have, then this is going to show it. Now, before you guys tell me get the BL touch because it's basically what I'm trying to build, uh, I don't necessarily want that because I want to build this differently. So, yes, I know about the BL touch, and it looks like the micro switches do a better job than the BL touch. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into the data and the different type of micro switches that I'm going to be testing. All right, so let's look at some of the switches that I picked out. So I'm going to try one of these type. This is probably going to be very bad, um, but this particular type just uh, isn't probably designed for this. The next one is a micro switch that looks like this, and it has the little knob sticking out, no lever here. And then the next switch is this, which I actually think would be the best because it's the most compact and probably going to be just as accurate as needed. Now, these limit switches all well, the, yeah, actually this one too. They all came out of a mouse, different mice. So I'll show you that now. The next ones that I've got here, um, I may not even test. These look like they're pretty old. I think these came out of a float tank of some kind. They got little float knobs on them where the things hit it. But uh, these little micro switches look fairly old. And I can't m remove the lever because the button's underneath there. So I have to do those with the lever only. The next are these. These are actually really, really old. Um, and there's two types. This is one type and this is another. Let's look at a good close close up of the top there. So you can see what they are. Made in Illinois, USA. These guys are very, very old, but probably very, very accurate. The next ones are the standard limit switches you would find, but these are a little bit smaller than the um, the ones you, I guess, more commonly see. But this one and the other one are about the same. These are like sub-micro and the other ones are micro. So I have two different brands here, but I probably just test one. So that's those two. The next one is this guy. And this guy I can pop the lever off, which is pretty nice. So you can see the name on there. Alright, the next one, or the last one, are these guys. So all of these are recycled limit switches. These are Armrons, the only Armron particular switch that I have in-house at the moment, uh, except for the bigger ones, which I'll test. 
All right, and last but not least, I'm gonna go ahead and use a couple of Omron, or one of these, uh, without the lever. I don't expect to ever be using the lever, so I'm just gonna do it without the lever. So that's, that's the, uh, the standard common size you find. So let me show you the Z-probe that I've been using. It's a bit hard to see, but there's a magnet on this side, there's a magnet on the inside. We'll get to the other side in a second. Here is the probe, it's just a spring. I've got this other attachment on the end because it has a roller on it, but usually I don't. Um, it just goes straight direct. So it pops in there, alright, and it attaches to the magnet that's inside this rail. And I'll pull it down and that's how it sits. So let me show you this side. Okay, on this side you've just got a Hall Effect sensor, the whole IC uh, board, and then the ICs on the end here. So as you can see, as this goes up, it triggers it. Now what's cool is if I push this all the way up, it stays. And it stays because of this magnet. So the BL Touch uh, is basically exactly this, except there's a small, well, I'm guessing, there's a small electromagnetic here that releases this probe. So when you hit that, it neutralizes the little piece of metal and pushes it back down. So I could make this into that style of sensor, automatic deployment. Right now you have to pull it down. And then when I want it to sit, I just take it off and I put this away because I normally don't use it. But with the Duet and the way it's set up, it probes every time or it's best to probe it every time. Or you can probe it every time and set up mesh leveling. So I need to be able to make this more permanent. But it works uh, really well. Now this was not my original uh, design. Someone else designed it. And then I modified it to accept this style sensor. Which I'll put the links in the description. And yeah, that's the current sensor. So let's probe. So the reason that this probe concerns me is because the really long arm has a lot of play in it. And it has the potential to move around and also depending on how smooth the rod is and how well it fits in there if the magnet is moved a little bit you know if the sensors are warmed up or cooled there's a potential that you know this movement is a serious problem and that's why I think a limit switch would be better if it's designed well but it still also has to have something that's why using the nozzle itself seems like a good idea but like I said I really don't like ramming the nozzle down into the the bed surface. The probe speed is five millimeters per second. That's how fast it takes for the, well I should say that's the speed that it's heading down to flip the switch. And it seems like uh, that's about the average speed that I'm going to be using. And so I tested it at that speed only. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the data. Now, I have here accumulated all of the points and put them into a nice graph for you. If you'd like to see a lot more detail in each probe actually probing, please stay tuned till the end of this video. Here is the deviation, okay? What this means is that we are looking at the deviation from the mean value at all the probe heights. This is kind of misleading because it's sort of an average of a bunch of tests. So why is it misleading to look at the average and then calculate the deviation? This is basically a, a set of points that's telling you most likely you're going to be in this range. But the thing is, is we also need to look at accuracy. So the deviation would be considered repeatability, kind of. Not quite, but kind of. So let's go ahead and jump over to the accuracy chart. Here is the accuracy chart, and you can see the difference between these two charts. I'll pull them up at the end here. And basically what this means is, is occasionally the accuracy is going to give you a value that's going to be off, or it could, potentially could be too much. It could be up into the 100 micron range, which would really be bad for your Z-probe application. Now, in these tests, all of these probes are really plenty accurate for this application even my hall sense probe is actually really really good and believe it or not the hall sense probe was the only one that nailed a perfect score but it only did it once it also nailed the worst score it does work really well and it's in the range of these limit switches here are the charts side by side so the deviation versus the total 
max and min difference. So I called one accuracy and one repeatability, but um, you know, really it's sort of an average the deviation is, is what you're going to commonly see. So most of the tests were done in millimeters, but this particular chart and the charts you saw earlier are in micrometers. So if you wanted a very accurate probe, which in my opinion an accurate probe is going to be more important than something with repeatability, because if it's not accurate, if it's one out of five times that you probe wrong, then that is going to be very frustrating for your Z-probe application. So I hope these tests were very interesting, and like I said, stay tuned to the very end for more detailed data on each probe. But all of these probes are well within in the acceptable range, and I'm actually quite impressed that they're this good. So let me know what your comments are in the comment section. So not only was this a test for the limit switches, but it's actually a test for my printer and the electronics and the way it's configured. And as you can see, it's very, very accurate, which is quite surprising considering the long and small skinny belts I have and everything that's configured the way it is. So, uh, yeah, I'm actually very pleased with the way this machine is. And if you'd like to see more of this machine, you can see me completely build this from start to finish. Check out the links in the description. All right, so there's your conclusion. And like I said in the beginning of this, I wanted to test a real world scenario because with this thing moving around and you probe in different spots, it's just not gonna work, you know, the same in every single person's printer. This will also check the resolution of my printer and just see how good and accurate it actually is in this method. And then also, the reason I want to use a limit switch or something that physically touches the bed uh, as well as my uh, inductive hall sensor is like if you think about it if you use a hall sensor and you have a plastic layer of tape or something on the top of your bed if you actually touch that tape or plastic bed on top of let's say an aluminum bed which is what I have here you're gonna get a lot more accurate reading touching the surface of what you're trying to print on versus inductively trying to figure out how close you are to the aluminum bed. It just doesn't make sense to me. Now, Tom obviously proved that the inductive sensors are really accurate. However, what he didn't do is put different thicknesses of plastic or some other material, or maybe he did do that, but put, put some other material in the front. So if that thickness changes, then you have a problem. Now, if that thickness is always the same, then, then perfect, by all means, do it. Um, but I think you could build or, or find a much smaller sensor um, to make the same thing work really well by using limit switches. So, I don't know. I've got plans to design this thing and I'll let you know what I come up with. But I really don't like the idea of the nozzle itself hitting the bed and taking the measurement. But I love the idea that the nozzle is the actual measurement. I know there's other designs out there, but I don't like the fact that if you heat the bed and then you want to probe it, you're going to be pushing a lot of force with a nozzle into the bed. And if you have a plastic bed or something like that, like PEI, you may actually cause some issues there. So anyway, that's my conclusion. I hope you guys like this video. Share the video around, please, and let me know, uh, let me know what you think. Good, bad, and the ugly. Yeah, I really love this Duet Wi-Fi board. And I'll be converting the uh, Ross talk over whenever I get this probe done, which is why I'm doing these tests. All right, signing out. See you. All right, here's all the extra data. So I'm going to let you guys just listen to each probe because I think it's interesting. So here we go. And there's some extras at the very end. Enjoy.
Well, I forgot to switch the probe settings around. And that one sort of went into the bed. We will not be testing that one. This one was going to be unreliable anyway. But now I have no data. Let's just call it not usable. I know it looks like it's hitting the bed, but I promise you it's not. So here's what the output of the code looks like. So it basically gives me all the points and then the mean and the deviation from the mean. So this particular program is actually just a micro and I'll show you what it looks like. This is what it looks like. You basically probe and it counts the points. This is how you do bed leveling. And then at the end I've got the negative or S negative one which just basically spits out what I just showed you. So it's a very simple, simple straightforward program. And then the one where I move it around, I just do a G code, probe, G code, move that thing around and it's pretty straightforward. That's all it is. Very easy and uh, I can share that with you down in the description. So here's my collection of limit switches. I have quite a few different styles and types and shapes and all kinds of different things that I've collected over the years. But most commonly, you're going to find this style. So this style is, you know, what Tom tested, and it's the most common. And then the next most common are these slightly smaller ones that I'll be testing. So I'll be testing both of them, but I just want to kind of show you where I got my limit switches from. There are all kinds of options that I have in this box. But, uh, yep, we're just going to test the normal ones. I'm not going to test these giant guys. So, that's where I got my limit switches from. 